Hi everybody, we are today we're going to talk a little bit about English for Engineers. This is a sub-series that I'm calling English for Engineers and particularly I am looking at uh, common mistakes that native Korean speakers make and how to address some of those uh, problems to improve general English and particularly for technical writing because I'm coming from an engineering background and we want to improve technical writing and technical speeches and presentations. The first thing we'll be talking about today is uh, common technical writing errors. And this comes out of, I've been rate grading some reports and I found some common mistakes that are easily corrected. And a lot of them come from uh, differences between Korean and English. So pretty much what we'll do is we'll go through each of these common mistakes that I've made examples here, we'll correct them, and then we'll kind of explain why uh, and how you can try to remember to not do make these mistakes again. Okay, so let's just start here. So here we have um, some sentence and you want to put a side comment or something in parentheses. And you can see this green wavy line here is saying that there's an error here. And the simple mistake here is that in English you always need to have a space after a word in between, before the parentheses starts. In Korean, you don't put a space, but in English, you need to put the space. So just remember to keep put that space in there and you, your English will be correct, okay? So the next one is very similar, common error, and the same idea, essentially. So here, we are going to cite a reference, and uh, I'm using the IEEE standard where we put our references in parentheses. And generally, you do this within the sentence after the last word or after the statement that you want to reference. So here, I'm going to cite this reference. And again, we have this green wavy line, meaning that there's an error here. And again, here, the easy fix is that we just need to have a space there. So English is very particular about the spacing. In Korean, you can just kind of attach them to the ends a lot of the times. But here, you need that space. So that fixes our problem. Great. So the next one, uh, we're going to cite another reference. And in general, this, you know, different writing styles are slightly different, but in generally in the way that we do with IEEE writing, we put the period outside of the after the reference. So here, if you want to reference number two, and it relates to this sentence, you generally put it inside the sentence. So uh, this might be correct in other styles, but for my purposes in this class and for m main IEEE writing, uh, you would do it like this. Okay. So here's another common mistake I see. Um, here's a statement, and you want to add something else, and you make another statement. Okay. In Korean, we usually use the word kudigo or some sort of transition word. There's lots of transition words in Korean. But in English, this is not a formal way of writing. So we cannot start a sentence with and in technical writing. And even technically, you would want to put a, a comma here. That's also not appropriate for technical writing. So there's two ways we can fix this. We can either put these two statements together by saying, Here's a statement and another statement. You have to decide if you need the, the comma here or not. It depends on your two statements and how they relate, but we'll put a comma here for now. Or a lot of times you can also, I'm going to copy the same thing here. Here's a statement. A lot of times you don't need this and, and you can just get rid of it and just say, here's a statement, period. Here's another statement. So. That is, these are both appropriate ways to write that, but generally you don't want to start with an and. And here again is the same thing. So here we have so, maybe like koreso, some sort of transition word that we commonly use in Korean. Um, so you say, oh, I've made an observation, so I conclude X. In English, when we write this in a technical paper, I've made an observation, you can put a comma and make sure to lowercase that because you're, it's no longer the beginning of a sentence. So I conclude x. That would be appropriate. You could also, um, if you just want to be more direct about it, you can also just take out 
the so, and then I've made an observation, I conclude x. It's more direct, but it's uh, completely appropriate in technical writing. Okay. Again, we're addressing the same issue here. So we have initially we thought x, but then we thought y. So we have the but here, and you don't want to start that. This would be kurochiman or um, some other transition word that means however or but. And you can put a comma here again. So comma, but then we thought y. If you really want to use a transition word, you can use however. But it's not, I prefer not to use this word as much as possible. So I think this would be the best transition. Uh, you could put however. You could also put, you could also put something else here. You could say after more description here, not just but. So initially we thought y, x, after further experimenting, mental results were found something. I'm just making this up here. <laughs> but you could put something more descriptive here. So after further uh, results were, let's say, examined, were examined. And actually, there we would need it then. We thought why. So you can make it more descriptive, break it into two sentences. You can just put the but with a comma. You can use however, although overusing this word uh, is tiresome to read in English, so try not to overuse it. Okay. Next one. Uh, this is more for referencing figures. So you have a figure. You have to reference your figure in your text. I, my great plot is shown figure one. So there's two things wrong with this sentence. The first one is my great plot. You have a great plot. It's wonderful. Is show shown. You want to make sure that your agreement uh, is working here. So shown, and you want to say in, and generally for IEEE writing, when we refer to a figure, the figure is capitalized, so figure one. So my great plot is shown in figure one, and um, that would be a more appropriate version of that sentence. Okay, this is another common mistake that I see. Um, we will describe, I will describe a system, especially the first part. Um, Generally, this is technically not wrong, uh, but I've seen students using especially when the more appropriate word is actually particularly or specifically. Specifically. So within something, you have some system, and within that, you want to focus on the first part. Especially is emphasizing, or specifically is kind of narrowing down the range of what you're going to talk about. So um, a lot of times, it's especially is not used as much in technical writing, it'd be specifically, it could be particularly also. So you could also use particularly, particularly. Okay, so those would be also a little bit, a little bit of an improvement over especially here. Okay. Um, so this is another common mistake. English speakers also do this a lot, so um, the de say you want to say the derivative of the state of the system. Too many ofs can be really difficult to read, especially I've seen like three in a row of different something of something of something. Generally, if you have of, so derivative of the state of the system, you can get rid of at least one of, so derivative, derivative of the, just put the word system at, in the front, so right in front of the state, and in this case, the system state makes sense as a, as a phrase. So the derivative of the system state. And if you want to, you could even say, oops, sorry, let's do one more. Just kidding, I keep doing this. OK. So you could also say the system state derivative, even go that far. So, but sometimes if you have too many words that are qualifying each other, so system, state, derivative, that can also get confusing. So you want to balance out the ofs and you're um, just uh, putting the words in direct order. I don't know the right English terms. I'm not an English professor. So um, 
But generally in writing, if you have too many ofs, see if you can put the words together and take out an of to make it clearer. Okay, so for now, I'm going to stop there. Um, I hope this is useful. I'll try to make this sheet available and try to do more of these in the future. So uh, that's all I have, and thank you for listening.